does my father's kids know about your sister? Why would you tell your mom about the situation in the first place? I was just telling her how strong you were and how much of a hot mess I would be if I were you. Yeah, but you're not. I know, I just wanted some advice on how I could take your mind off of things. You think buying me shit's gonna make the situation better? Keisha could be dead right now. Don't say that. What do you want me to say? Everything's gonna be all right? Episode six of The Shy. Very compelling, very telling. We got our big reveal about who the broke back ass mountain captor of Keisha is, and we're gonna break it all down in this top five WTF moments for episode six. If you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so when I drop videos, you get them. Check me and the fellas out live Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night. We go 9 p.m. This week, we will have Sharonda from Pay or Wait. Some of you guys know her. She is big, 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 big compadre to our Life Games team. And follow me on Instagram if you want to talk about the real estate, you want to talk about the baby, any of the other things we cover on this channel. Let's dive into it. Number five moment. Ronnie takes his grandma back to the club that she used to own when it was a hot jazz spot. And now it is a strip club, male strip club. And I found this to be very telling because as I said in my trailer review, this chick seems to have, you know, um, dementia and, and Alzheimer's um, sparingly when she wants to. Because at first she wasn't feeling going in this club. Then when she gets in there and they start dancing all up on her, she started to have a good time. And I don't have a problem with it. If you old and you still got the juices flowing, go for it, man. Somebody tried to jump down my throat because I made a comment about her getting her juices flowing. But that person didn't want to comment on the fact that she was receptive of a stripper dancing on her. So I'm under mindset. If you old enough to still get some, get you some, do you, boo-boo. You're at the end of your life. You need to have as much enjoyment as you can. And what did we see at the very end of that whole scene? Ronnie took her back after she gave a compelling speech to the people in the club about what it used to stand for, how it used to be an icon for up-and-coming jazz artists, poets, things of that nature. He took her back, and then she died. Doc can only wonder, how is this going to affect Ronnie? What is this going to make him do? He could spiral out of control. He could go on to live a, a life of giving. We'll just have to see where it takes Ronnie. And the number four WTF moment. Brandon's nerd cousin resurfaces as the owner of the dispensary that Tiff been getting her weed product from. And I hope this makes the Larrys and all the other brothers out there happy that have been complaining that Lena Waif didn't write in a good brother into this story because he is the very definition of a good brother. He's a businessman. He's got a little nerd in him. He's kind of a hippie tree hugger to some degree, but he's a smart hippie tree hugger and he's about his business. Tiff goes in there with Emmett and at first she's getting down on Emmett because Emmett is trying to get her a deal. Well, that's what a solid businessman does. And that was the very definition of you having a business team. Because where someone is weak, you can be strong. Obviously, Tiff is weak in her negotiations, even though she's great at her sales. Emmett is good in negotiations, even though he's not good at the rest of the deal. And he makes a deal with Brandon's cousin, and bam, they get a 15% discount. And he was able to explain to Brandon's cousin how it can help both of them out. So I would love to see Emmett become Tiff's manager, even though she said no. And I would love to see Brandon, I mean, excuse me, Emmett hook up with Brandon's cousin and see what they can do in business. But immediately after that, Tiff went to one of her regulars and the regular was broke. And instead of paying, she did a tarot card reading and which at that point, Emmett should have stepped in like, nah, we can't help you. But sometimes when you have a regular, as long as you know they've got a good track history, you look out for them. And at that tarot card reading, she pretty much scared Tiff into thinking that Brandon is, is you know, hitting some draws somewhere. Excuse me, not Brandon. Emmett is hitting something somewhere else. And we'll just have to see where that goes. I'm pretty sure that that tarot card reading was all about Dominique. And we'll see where it goes. Number three WTF moment. And this is going to be a tie. There are two number three WTF moments. First one, Jake and Trig. Trig confronts Jake about where is Reg's stash money. Jake tells him, you know, Reg was horrible with money. He didn't have one. But Trig is an old G. Trig know better. 
And Trig finally gets to go to this place where Reg had his stash money. And he kind of strung Jake along because he knew Duda had a hitter following them. And so they go to Red Joe's stash house. And wasn't it amazing, y'all, how quickly Trig was able to figure out where that money was at? He didn't have no metal detector. He didn't have no money detector. He just beat on the wall here and there, found a hollow point, and bam, he found the money. I thought that was rather ironic, but hey, nonetheless, he got the money. And then one of Duda's people popped up in there. Trig knew he was being followed. He beat him up, beat him down, and he revealed to Jake that he knew it. Jake kind of felt like, man, I can't trust you. But at the same time, that was an eye-opener to Jake that Duda is dirty. And so Trig just basically said, look, man, I don't want to spend this 50 grand on um, you unless you want to be with me. So we'll just see, man, because Jake, I don't know where Jake's mind at. And earlier in this episode, you seen where Trig kind of poke the bear, so to speak, at Jake getting with Gemma, Kev's girl. And when we get to the WTF that involves Kev and his girl, I'm going to break that down too. Tied for the number three WTF, Duda's mom goes on TV to reveal how much of a scumbag her own damn son is. And ladies and gentlemen, can you just imagine how compelling of a story it can be if you don't know the history of the woman for all we know, she could be a crackhead, she could be a deadbeat, we don't know her history. But to just get on TV and you talk about your son who's running for a political office, that can be damaging. And the whole time Candy is telling Duda, she's like, look, bro, you need to get in front of this and handle it. He's like, nah, we're going to let it die down. No, that particular situation is not one you can let die down because she wasn't some random. Had she just been some random person off the street, yeah, you might can let it die down. But this is your mother. And you can't run from the fact that your mother is telling you you're a piece of crap. But we later find out that the mom is caking up for Lena Waif's character because Lena Waif, as I told y'all a couple of episodes ago, is dirty. Going to the church, paying off, do, I'm paying off Papa's dirty daddy. And she's in here paying her off as well to say things about the son. But you see Candy being the consummate uh, professional, being the consummate supporter of the husband. Even though Duda said don't go say nothing, Candy was going to say something. Candy was ready to pay this woman first $10,000, then $20,000 to get the woman to sign to shut up about her son, even though she popped off at the mouth about she's still going to vote for Lena Waite's character. And then the son walks in, rolls his eyes. They had their little thing. Bada bing, bada bang, boom, they're out. And he's still mad with Candy when Candy was doing him a solid. Um, then he goes and finally takes Candy's advice, does an interview, and lo and behold, he has dirt on Lena Waif's character. He's got a recording that he plays for them to hear so they know just how crooked she is. So, ladies and gentlemen, this part of the thing is heating up. I'm interested to see where they go. What is going to be Lena Waif's retaliation? We'll guess we'll have to find out next episode. Number two WTF moment. All the things surrounding Kev and the lead up to his birthday. And before we get into the birthday, I think that I've been saying that What's going to break the fellas apart is Jake is going to start hitting on Gemma and Gemma's going to like him. Like I said, in this episode, Trig alluded to that with Jake. And now we've seen a dissension in the rank between Kev and Gemma because they was having fun going to the skate ring and all that, having a little date and all that. And then it was revealed that Gemma went and ran her mouth and that hurt feelings. It took his trust away from her because he wanted her to keep it quiet. And even though, she, you know, she manned up or womaned up and came clean about it, she still broke his trust. She still hurt his feelings. And I think that that fracture in their relationship might be the opening for Jake to slide on in there. Because y'all know when you're young and you act like you hate somebody, you really like them. You know, boys, the way they show a girl that they like them when they're really, really young kids is to hit them. Stuff like that. And a girl talks junk about them when she really like them. So I think that's going to be the opening for her to, um, for Jake and Gemma to wind up getting together and cause a more of a rift for Kevin. But they give Kevin the surprise birthday party. He looks to be happy. He looks to have a moment of tranquility. And uh, I, feel, I feel for this character because even though he's having that moment, you know he's thinking about the well-being of his sister and where she's at. Which leads us to our number one WTF moment. Reminded me of my very first crush. Sophia Boyden. Oh, she was so damn pretty.
Cody. Save you. I can save you. They finally show the broke back ass mountain brother captor of Keisha. And for those of you that said it was the dude that went into the restaurant, you was absolutely right. I said it with y'all. That's why I rocks with y'all because y'all be knowing this stuff. And it starts out with our guy Ronnie popping up to the house, knowing that he heard something there. Ronnie had a great cockamamie scheme about having to use the bathroom, being homeless, blah, blah, blah. Now, we know Ronnie's got that military training. So he's got an a idea and a um, body of evidence to know something is going on in that house. And I was really, really hoping that he'd figure it out. So he's in the bathroom, and Keisha did her thing this time. Y'all can't complain that she ain't do the right thing because she screamed to the top of her lungs. She knew somebody was in there. She didn't care about the fear. She screamed. She hollered. She even tried to get by the vent screaming holler. And Ronnie heard it. But at the same time, downstairs, homeboy was baking some coffee, had the coffee on, and that was whistling. And when Ronnie got back downstairs and said, did you hear that, and turned his back, I'm sitting up here like, Ronnie, why are you turning your back to this dude that you don't trust for already? And he thought it was the coffee maker. Dude was about to hit him with a trophy. And for whatever the reason, Ronnie left, even though I thought Ronnie was going to come back. you know, And I still do think Ronnie thinks something is up. So I don't think Ronnie is quite done with the situation. They go into the backstory of this bum and to what has led him into capturing Keisha. And he's been scarred as a younger person because whoever this girl was in school turned him down for the athletes. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that shit happens in high school. It happens all the time. Man up about it because when you become an adult, some of them same girls, they wind up wising up. And they wind up seeing dudes like this if you can keep yourself together and not go crazy like this punk ass. And they'll come, come to their barons and start getting with the smart brothers. This dude, instead of just living his life, putting some things together, building on his own self, he wants to capture underage girl. I mean, like a effing you know what. I'm not even going to say the word. And he relates that girl's hair as being her God's gift and what really attracted him. And he got so mad about that that that's leading him to cutting off Keisha's beloved hair, man. Lord have mercy. This dude is just a piece of crap. And while he's doing all that, look at the face on Keisha. Look at the disgust on her face. And just look at him reveling and rubbing through her hair with those scissors and cutting it off. Even snapping his fingers telling her to sit down. So those of you that really, really hate pedophiles, which I'm assuming we all hate it. But it really, really bothers some of us to actually see the brutality of such things on screen. This had to make your skin crawl. I know my skin was crawling. I was upset. And I can't wait for them to catch this bum and somebody serve him the five-knuckle shuffle right across the nose. And what I'm hearing from you all on the streets, Keisha is going to be freed next week in Episode 7. So I'll drop my trailer review tomorrow. We'll go live with Pay or Wait, me and Larry, tomorrow at 9 p.m. And we'll discuss it and see what clues we can find for Episode 7. That's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like my video. Please comment, subscribe. Go get yourself that life game. Follow me on Instagram. Drop me all your messages, all your notes. Anything you want to say on the gram, hit me up. And we will get back to doing our investing in the stock market, helping you guys make those life gains in that area as well. I'm still adjusting the baby L, so I ask you guys to bear with me. And until that next sexy as hell video, I'll see you.